Ciao e bentornati, anzi benvenuti! Yes, welcome to the first episode of Italian Accelerator, the only, I think it's pretty much the only, uh, online course uh, available on YouTube for advanced learners of Italian. Now, so you might say this is not really the first episode because there was an episode last week. Well, yes, that's how it works. For Italian Accelerator, there's two components. Uh, on Thursday, of one week, I will publish a section of an interview that I recorded with some of my friends. Now, these interviews are pretty good because they're very slangy. They are authentic. They are the way Italians speak to each other. Now, these interviews are difficult to understand, clearly. These are two native speakers who talk casually and kind of slangy to each other. But that's where the power of Italian Accelerator is. In the following episode, or I shouldn't say that, the following week, I come back in the studio here recording this thing here. And what I do is I explain to you the expressions, some vocabulary, some of the slang that was used, anything that I, f I think would be useful for you, okay, to expand your knowledge of Italian. Now, if you've watched the interview of this first episode, you may have freaked out. Now, let me be clear about what Italian Accelerator is and it isn't. Now, first of all, it's not for beginners. You're more than welcome to watch the episodes. Uh, in fact, in my opening of the interview, I said, if you're a beginner, activate subtitles. So, of course, I want you to watch it. But don't be harsh on yourself because it's going to be really, really, really hard for you to understand. So, beginners, you can use this material mostly for passive l learning. So you're listening to Italian, you can read subtitles, you get a connection between the sounds and the words. You might be able to spot some words here and there, and that's as far as I would want you to go as a beginner. As a lower intermediate, same thing really. These interviews are tough, okay? Now, as an upper intermediate or advanced student, again, I think you freaked out as well. And that's because you're probably not used to hearing Italian spoken at that speed with that complexity. You know, these are two friends catching up. We speak slang. I mean, we're not kids, but we, everybody speaks, you know, like, you know, the street Italian, okay? Which is not the Italian that you've been taught in school or university or wherever you're studying. So don't feel bad about it. Actually feel magnificent about what you've done because the idea of these, of these episodes for you, advanced learner of Italian, is to have something to work with, something that is challenging for you. And as you're watching an interview, I would like you to focus on getting the gist of things, learning how to detect words, keywords in something that we might be saying in the interview that you understand it's important, but you just don't know what it means. And then make a note of the word that you think you heard. And then you can check uh, with the subtitles if you got it right. But yes, overall, I don't want you to try and uh, to expect to be able to understand everything of the interview. You're not going to. Actually, I'll tell you a funny story. I hired somebody uh, uh, to help me out with subtitling because, as you can imagine, it takes forever to do all I'm doing. Uh, and this uh, lovely lady got back to me uh, and saying, okay, these are the subtitles. And she left quite a few blanks because she wasn't sure what we were saying. Mostly Rosella. Um, I don't know why, because Rosella speaks, I think, more clearly than me. But anyway, yes, yeah, so even an Italian native speaker wasn't able to hear everything. Now think of yourself as an English native speaker. Do you always understand everything that people are saying on TV or in interviews or in movies? Of course you don't. There are things that you just, what did she say? Or, you know, same thing happens with songs. How many times you're singing a song and say, I have no idea what they're saying, and that's your native language. So. Of course, you're not going to be able to understand everything in this language, but I'm here to help. So let's get right into uh, analyzing this first episode or the first interview or the first segment of the first interview. And I'm not going to translate everything because there's just not enough time. Um, like I said, I want you to be able to, with your level of Italian, understand most of it through the subtitles. You can use pause button, you can look up words, you can do whatever you want, but get to this point. That's why I give you a week to prepare. When you come back to me on Thursday, uh, the following week where I'm in the studio explaining stuff to you, I want you to be prepared. I would like you to have tried to understand as much as possible. And now I'm, you're here and I'm going to explain some amazing stuff to you. All right, let's get started.
Allora, sono, mi chiamo Rosella Zocchedu, che è un cognome abbastanza tipico della Sardegna. Vengo dalla Sardegna, abito in Sardegna <ride> e al momento sono insegnante principalmente. Perfetto. Now, in this first sec- segment, I'm assuming that you understood most of it. You know, this is a basic introduction. So, Rosella, her name is Rosella. Uh, her last name is Zocchedu, which is a very typical Sardinian last name. And she lives in Sardegna. She does everything in Sardegna. Um, and that's the only expression that I want to bring out from this segment. And it's al momento. Okay, so al momento. That means currently, at this moment. And you can use this anytime you are telling what you're doing at the moment. Quindi, per esempio, uh, al momento insegno in un... Uh, al momento insegno in una università. At the moment... I'm working uh, at a university, or I'm teaching at a university. Or it could be something more trivial, like, Emanuele, uh, Manu, che fai? You could say, oh, al momento sto lavando i piatti. At the moment, I'm washing the dishes. Whatever you're doing at the moment, so currently. And that's it. Let's go on with the second section. Insegnante... Che tipo di insegnante? A che livello? Che scuola? Insegno al, alle scuole superiori, ho una, una cattedra divisa. Sto insegnando in un liceo e quindi insegno letteratura inglese ah. e dall'altra parte insegno all'istituto alberghiero e quindi insegno cucina e ricevimento. <ride> cucina e ricevimento in inglese o cucina e ricevimento punto? Sì, no, 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 in inglese. In ah, inglese. ok, ok. Sì, il corso di inglese per, gli ah, sì. per chi deve andare a lavorare in cucina e per chi sta studiando per il ricevimento. Benissimo. Did you understand uh, some of what she said? Now, the main thing that I would like to tell you about are these expressions. Le scuole superiori. This is what Italians call high school. Le scuole superiori, or you could just say le superiori. Le superiori, high school. You don't have to say le scuole superiori, okay? Uh, Le medie would be le scuole medie, middle school. Le elementari would be elementary school. So the way it works is elementary, first five years of your schooling time, from six to 10, 11, whatever. Um, le medie, from 11 to 14, so that's three years. And then le superiori, high school, from 14 to 18. Uh, sometimes 19, it depends. Okay, so le scuole superiori. Now, uh, Rosella has a cattedra. Now, cattedra is the official word uh, for teachers when they hold a seat. They hold, cattedra actually means the desk, the teacher's desk. So she holds a desk, which is a very ambitious uh, thing in Italy, considering the unemployment and all of that. So uh, she holds a cattedra, which means that she's, uh, she's got a, a permanent position with uh, the education system in Italy. Now, she actually has a cattedra divisa, which I never heard of before, and that then she explains that she has she teaches in two places. So she's one teacher with one contract, but she has to teach in two different schools. And one of the two different schools is un istituto alberghiero. Istituto alberghiero. This is a high school that specializes in tourism. Uh, in Italy, our, our high school are very different from other countries, especially English-speaking countries. Um, Basically, when you're 14, you finish middle school, you have to choose who, what you're going to be when you grow up. When you grow up. So if you want to work in hospitality, you do high school for hospitality. Uh, if you want to be an accountant, you do high school for accountants. I wanted to be a linguist, I did high school for languages. Now, it doesn't mean that you're done. After high school, you have to go on to do university, but you have a much uh, stronger uh, basis for your knowledge. And that is actually why, not bragging, um, Italian scholars are... Uh, are extremely, extremely respected all over the world. Uh, you go to a university uh, for a PhD, you say that you show them that you have an Italian degree and they kind of beg you to stay. That's pretty good. Uh, so, is, now, the, the main, a very important word that she used, probably hard to hear, was gli addetti. She teaches um, cucina e ricevimento, like kitchen and reception, for uh, people who are going to be addetti. Now, addetti is a very generic word. Un addetto is a technician or somebody, somebody who's been appointed to do something. For example, you could have un addetto tecnico, that's your IT technician. Okay. Uh, you could have una, 
addetto alle poste, you, then you will be a postal employee. It's a very generic word, okay? And it just means that you've been appointed for that role, okay? It doesn't mean you're an expert, it just means that you've been appointed for that. Perché nella scuola alberghiera c'è un sacco di vocabolario tecnico da imparare, anche per me. Anche per te. E, anche per me, sì. E, e poi mi scontro con uh, un, un livello molto basso di ambizione. E quindi, so, per me, il turismo, specialmente in Sardegna, specialmente nella provincia di Uistano, che ha solo quello, eh. dovrebbe essere... Il massimo, sì. Dovrebbe essere, sì, il massimo. In this segment, Rosella uh, goes on to tell us that the, the job at the alberghiero school, the um, hospitality school, is quite challenging, mainly because there's a lot of vocabulary that she has to learn. I mean, she's a native Italian speaker and she's teaching English for uh, uh, tourism. So she has to learn a lot of technical stuff as well. But the main thing is that she's faced with very low levels of ambition and she thinks that it's pretty bad, especially uh, in an, on an island, especially in, in Oristano, that's where she's teaching, because tourism is all they've got. So here are the expressions that I want to show you. Mi scontro, she says, mi scontro con un livello molto basso di ambizione. Mi scontro, that's from the verb scontrarsi. As you can see, it's a reflexive verb. And it means to, to be faced with. But scontrarsi also means to have an accident, like a car accident. So scontrarsi means to, like that, okay, collide, let's say. So it's kind of a dual uh, uh, verb. So mi scontro con un livello basso di ambizione. It's like saying I'm confronted with a low level of ambition or I'm faced with a low level of ambition. It's got a negative meaning. Especially, and that's the word that you're going to find very useful because you're going to use it a lot, specialmente. Specialmente, specialmente in Sardegna, specialmente a Oristano, especially. So please use this one. The other, scontrarsi, probably you're not going to use it, but at least you know what it means, okay? Non mi puoi dire reception come dicono tutti gli italiani, stai studiando per, per diventare receptionist, porca miseria, mi imparano, almeno receptionist. Imparano. Almeno il tuo lavoro. <laughs> so Rosella goes on with uh, how frustrating it is to see people or her students not wanting to learn how to master English in a place where tourism is everything, right? And so she says, you know, you can't come to me and say reception, receptionist which is the way Italians would say receptionist. I mean, you're going to be a receptionist, at least you should be able to say it. And then she says, porca miseria. Porca miseria is a very clean swear word. So it's like saying oopsie daisy. It's like, oh, well, it's one of those really clean ones, okay? And it's like saying, now porca means dirty and miseria is misery, so dirty misery. What it means is, it's like saying holy cow. Okay, so it's a, it's a clean thing. An alternative that would be not clean Oh, actually, other alternatives that are still clean would be porca vacca, holy cow, really. Uh, not holy, sorry, dirty cow. <laughs> sorry, there's nothing holy about that. Uh, porca vacca, okay. And then there are, you know, it gets dirtier and dirtier, which I'm not going to do in this video. I have a different series for swear words. Um, but yeah, it's like saying, you know, saying something a little bit dirtier in English would be like, like holy crap. So, but it's, it's a clean thing, but that's the context, okay? Or, you know, like a, a damn it kind of word would be a, a heavy version of this one. So this one is totally okay. Il livello è buono, il livello anche di educazione è buono, il livello di partenza è anche buono, cultura generale. Eh? Educazione nel senso Lì... di, di istruzione o di maniera? Di maniere. Okay. Mm -hmm. Di maniere. Now, in the other school where she teaches, which is a private school, uh, she, she finds that the level is pretty good. And then she says the level of educazione. And I, and I ask, when you say educazione, do you mean istruzione or maniere? Did you hear that? Now, educazione literally means education, right? But in Italian, educazione also means manners. So my distinction was 
Educazione meaning istruzione, which is another way to talk about education, as in uh, higher education or I ha you have an education. That's istruzione. But educazione also means manners. When you think, of, do you know the word maleducato? Maybe you do. Okay, let me just write it down for you. Maleducato. That means a rude person. Maleducato. Somebody who's been educated poorly. Okay? So like an ill-mannered person. So that's why educazione can mean that those two things. And then she says... Ci siamo conosciuti a Trieste, all'Università, alla Scuola per Interpreti, e ci siamo conosciuti anche per caso, perché io ho due anni più di te. Bene, in this other segment, Rosella, <coughs> sorry, we moved on to talking about how we met, and she says the word per caso. This is a very useful expression for you guys. Per caso means by chance, okay? We met by chance. The reason she says that we met by chance is that as you'll hear uh, in a second, she's older than me, and so she shouldn't have been in the same year as me, but we, we made friends. Adesso che mi, stai, che mi racconterai questa storia, t'avverto, io ho la mente di un lombrico col, col tumore al, al cervello, quindi... Probabilmente non mi ricordo questo bellissimo aneddoto di come ci siamo conosciuti, quindi dimmelo perché no, no, mi, no. mi, mi illuminerà di mezzo. Now, before she tells this story about how we met, I warn her and I say, look, I have the memory of a, I think, like I said, like of an inchworm with cancer, with brain cancer. Uh, I, I'm not going to remember anything, so don't be offended if I don't remember how we met. And then she says, oh, no, no, we, there was nothing fancy. But this is, these are the expressions that uh, I think they're going to be useful for you. T'avverto, I tell her, t'avverto. That's from the verb avvertire, which means I warn you. Okay, give notice. So t'avverto means I warn you, I give you notice. Okay, so be prepared. Now, when would you use this? For example, uh, somebody asks you to go out and you uh, agree, you agree to go, but you're really tired. Then you might say, okay, vengo, ma t'avverto, sono stanchissimo. Okay, I'm coming, but I warn you, I'm really tired, which means I'm not going to be so bubbly and, and so on, okay? So that's the idea of t'avverto. Now, that t'avverto is because I'm talking to tu, to you. If it was I warn you guys, it would be vi avverto, or in slangy, v'avverto, just the apostrophe. Ma io uno più tardi, perché io ho fatto un anno alla sapienza. I tell her that um, she's two years late for university. Uh, I may have cut it out but, uh, because she did two years in London. And I said, look, but uh, I, I was also one year late because I did one year at La Sapienza. La Sapienza. This is Rome's biggest university. And oh, it's massive. That's where I studied for a year. And I'm telling her that that's the reason I was also late by a year for our age. And it's La Sapienza. So you don't have to say l'Università La Sapienza, you can, but it's just known as La Sapienza. Oh, by the way, La Sapienza mean, literally means the knowledge. Good, good name for a university, isn't it? Now... Feci l'esame di ammissione a Trieste l'anno dopo le superiori, non mi presero, per ripiego e per non fare il militare, perché all'epoca era obbligatorio, mi, mi iscrissi alla Sapienza facendo quello che non mi andava, cioè lingue e letterature straniere. Now, in this segment, I tell her what, what my story was in relation to attending la Sapienza, and I use a bunch of verbs that you probably have not recognized. The first three words. Feci, non mi presero e mi iscrissi. Now, not knowing what these are, can you guess what... Ver what well, infinitive these verbs come from? I'll give you a second. Now, I think I say, I said, feci l'esame d'ammissione, the admission exam, the entry exam. F feci. What verb is that? Fare. Bene. Non mi presero. Non mi presero. What verb is that? Infinitive. Prendere. Bene. And then I said, mi iscrissi. Mi iscrissi. Now, this verb you might not know even in definitive, but let's say you do. What is it? Okay, that's iscriversi, iscriversi, which 
means, let me just write it down. Okay, iscriversi, which means to enroll, okay? But these are verbs in, um, in a tense that you probably don't know, okay? The tense that I use here is the passato remoto. Passato remoto. You know the passato prossimo as a past tense. You also know the imperfetto as a past tense, but you probably have not studied the passato remoto. We don't even teach it at my university where I teach. That's because it's not used a lot in conversation. That's what's believed, but I do use it. Uh, it's the historical past tense. Now, before I go on, in the south of Italy, it's actually used as a normal past tense. So if you're in the south, they use it a lot. But in the Italian language, the standard Italian language, it's not really used that much. It's only used to talk about really far events. Now, me attending this exam is not that far. I mean, it's what? Well, it is a bit far, but it's, it's not hundreds of years, okay? It's probably like 20 years or whatever. Uh, so it's not too far. But I'm using the passato remoto because if I say to you, ho fatto l'esame d'ammissione, ho fatto l'esame d'ammissione, I did the entry exam, like I took the entry exam. To me, Italian native speaker, and to you probably, it sounds like, well, I took the entry exam, but it's, it's, it sounds recent. I expect, I would expect me to say yesterday, last month, even two years ago, okay? But here we're talking about 20. So I chose to use the passato remoto, which I'm not going to explain in this video. Same thing with me, non mi presero, they didn't take me, they didn't accept me. Again, 20 years ago, not yesterday. If it was yesterday, I would have said non mi hanno preso, right? If you were talking about what you had yesterday for breakfast, you would say ho preso un caffè, non ho preso un cappuccino. So you would use the passato prossimo and that's fine, but here we're talking about 20 years ago. So I choose to use the passato remoto and most Italians will. Even people from Milan who do not use the passato remoto a lot, it just sounds wrong to say vent'anni fa ho fatto l'esame d'ammissione. Vent'anni fa ho fatto l'esame d'ammissione. 20 years ago I took the entry exam. It just sounds a bit weird. And the same with me, Scrissi. I enrolled 20 years ago. Okay, so passato remoto, while you may not be required to know a lot about it, at least passively, I think it's actually, it's a good next step for you if you're an advanced student and you've covered most tenses, maybe approach the passato remoto. It's full of irregular ones, so it's tough. And then I say that uh, because I didn't take me at the university where I wanted to study, which was the University for Interpreters where I met Rosella, I said per ripiego, per ripiego. This expression I want you to learn, okay? Per ripiego, I don't even know the English equivalent. It's like saying as a second option. So whenever you ripieghi onto something else, you're lowering your standards, really. It's like your second best option, okay? So you can use this anytime you would think, I need to say, that didn't work, and as a second option, I did this other thing. You know, even like with the person you're dating, and I hope not, but yeah, I wanted to date that one, but they were interested, so per ripiego, I started dating this other one. I mean, it's a very bad example, but you know what I mean. Okay, so... But that's what I did with my university, so per ripiego. E il segreto che tutti voi rosicavate che io non ho fatto un esame odioso che voi tutti avete fatto. Ah, oh, Dio. Benissimo. In this final segment, I said there was a little secret that you guys, you were all that's and the verb that I'm about to teach you, because I, I got credits for a very difficult exam that you all had to sit and I didn't because I had the credits. So the verb that I used is extremely, extremely useful because we use it all the time. It's slang, okay? I said, tutti voi rosicavate. Tutti voi rosicavate. That's an imperfetto. And the infinitive is rosicare. Rosicare means to nibble. So when you were like, you know, like a little hamster, like, like, like that. that's rosicare. But we don't use it to mean that. Rosicare means to be jealous. Okay, so this is really useful. Uh, I can say, uh, ah, stai rosicando. Stai rosicando. Now write it down. Stai 
status account, it means you are being jealous about what I just told you. Okay. Or I could say, non rosicare. Uh, like, you know, I'm going on a holiday, like I'm going on a six month holiday around the world, non rosicare. Don't be jealous. Now, it's, it's cute and affectionate. It's mostly used in the center of Italy, but it's understood everywhere in Italy. And it's a very colorful expression. And it just means to be jealous and or envious. Maybe that's a better word in English. Okay. Perfetto, ragazzi. Benissimo. Allora, abbiamo finito questo primo episodio uh, di Italian Accelerator. I hope you learned a bunch of uh, useful expressions and you understood how the format works. Now, in the next episodes, next Thursday, uh, you will see an, a second segment of the interview that I had with Rosella and there's going to be more expressions and there's a very funny portion of the um, interview that I actually, every interview that I recorded has this part, which is I ask my friends to share their favorite Italian words and also their favorite or most used Italian swear words. So there'll be a part where we talk about swear words a little bit more because uh, I know you, a lot of you want to know. But now something about these videos, by the way, you can see they're quite old, meaning uh, I recorded these interviews last year and that's how long it took me to get around to recording this series. That's because I'm, I do a lot. I do a lot. I still have a job at the university, teaching, creating courses, coordinating. So it's a lot of work, but uh, so never mind the age of uh, the recordings. So we might talk about things that are not relevant anymore, but it doesn't matter. Okay. So what matters is the content and I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next episode. Ciao, ciao. Grazie mille. Un bacione. Arrivederci. And of course, go to italymedici.com to support me in any way you can. Grazie mille. And to download a lot of PDFs and stuff. Okay. Ciao, ciao. <laughs>